Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of The Magic Cottage by James Herbert. So I bought a job lot of James Herbert books on eBay. I've already read probably seven or so, um, and I've now got four more to work through. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. I will say I'm only like that far in, so this is very much going to be like a reading vlog style where I update you as I go along. Uh, I'll just film an, an, an extra bit each day with the new tabs till we reach the end. This is quite cool as well. Just in it, you know. But yeah, the blurb. Dane reads. We thought we'd found our haven, a cottage deep in the heart of the forest. Quaint, charming, maybe a little run down, but so peaceful. The woodland animals and birds couldn't have been more neighborly. That was the first part of the magic. Midge's painting and my music soared to new heights of creativity. That was another part of the magic. Our sensing, our feelings, our love for each other. Well, that became the supreme magic. But the cottage had an alternative side, the bad magic. What happened to us there was horrendous beyond belief. The miracles, the healings, the crazy sect who wanted our home for themselves, the hideous creatures that crawled from the nether regions, and the bats, oh god, the bats. Even now those terrible things seem impossible to me, yet they happen. So right off the bat, it starts with this couple looking for a new place to live, and we get a reference to, um, to uh, the new forest. Any idea of how big the new forest is? Bigger than Hyde Park? Somewhat. A huge what? And I just thought that was interesting because James Herbert mentions uh, the New Forest quite often in his books. I think that's four or five I've read now where he's mentioned the New Forest. And this is kind of an introduction to the cottage, Grammar I. You've seen the film, you've read the book, you know the one, there have been so many. The young couple finds the home of their dreams, the wife's ecstatic, the husband's happy but more controlled. They move in, the kids, usually one of each, tear around the empty rooms. But we know there's something sinister about the place because we've read the blurb and paid our money. Slowly, things start to happen. There's something nasty in the locked room at the top of the old creaky stairs, or something lurks in the cellar below, which is possibly itself the gateway to hell. You know the story. At first, Dad's oblivious to his family going nuts around him. He doesn't believe in the supernatural or things that go splodge in the night. To him, there really is no such thing as a vampire. Until something happens to him, that is. Then all hell, then all hell breaks loose. You know it like you wrote the story yourself. Well, this is similar, but different. You'll see. And what's interesting is, it's kind of meta, obviously, but also James Herbert has very much written books that are exactly that plot. And uh, so they go along to check it out, and the estate agent gives them the keys, and he goes, I won't accompany you unless you specifically want me to. I always feel clients prefer to inspect on their own and discuss things freely between themselves. Which I think is quite odd. I've never had an estate agent do that. I think in the UK, they would be worried that you'd go and make get a copy of the key cut and, like, move in as a squatter, you know? And then um, Mike, who is the, the main guy in it, um, he's um, a musician, he's a session musician, occasional touring musician, and he gets asked to, um, to, to play in the Everly Brothers backing band, which I think is very cool, because I love the Everly Brothers. There's a reference to magic mushrooms, and one of the characters goes, no, Mike, you'll only find those kind of magic mushrooms in some parts of Wales, as far as I know. I very much doubt if they grow in Hampshire. They grow in High Wycombe. My ex-girlfriend used to go gathering them for a friend just grow wild and we get this little bit of dialogue that didn't didn't make me laugh i'd cut off a leg rather than cause you worry i said she sniffed but the traces of a smile appeared at the corners of her mouth where would i keep a spare leg we get a reference to uh, phil collins like in one of the songs that the main character had written and he goes into the studio to record it with him and then this bit i just thought was quite funny because it's quite self-aware so um I didn't care though, enough was enough. I was going to sort out this bloody watcher in the woods once and for all. Forget about discarnate beings and women in black and shrouded apparitions and something wicked this way comes and psycho and omen and exorcist and the evil fucking dead. I was going to confront the beast that wasn't a beast at all but somebody playing silly bloody games at my expense. Whatever fear may have been in me was easily overwhelmed by a furious indignation. But yeah, that's all I really want to share from The Magic Cottage. It was okay. It was just quite generic for a haunted house story. Um, it actually played on that genericism at some times and it kind of worked. But um, it was like a 3.5 out of 5 for me. It was okay. Not one of Herbert's best. Um, but for any other author, I suppose it would be pretty good. Um, I'm glad I read it because I can tick it off. But I mean, it's probably bottom half in terms of his best books, I would say. But still all right. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Magic Fog by James Herbert. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.